And joining me now, we have Harry Littman, former U.S. attorney and former Clinton administration deputy assistant attorney general. He's now host of the Talking Feds podcast and legal affairs columnist with the L.A. Times. And I read your article in the L.A. Times, and that's why, my friend, you're on the show. So we're going to talk about this. Um, we're going to run through the scenarios because, first up, even if he wins, he would not have the power to make the 34 New York convictions go away. So how do you see the sentencing proceeding if he wins and conversely if he loses? OK, let's start with if he loses, Alex. If he loses, it's a relatively low level set of felonies under New York law, but there's plenty of precedent for Justice Merchan to impose a probably short incarceratory penalty. And people shouldn't forget this, a fairly long term of probation, which imposes real constraints on a man who's been used to doing whatever the hell he's wanted all his life. He will now have to say pretty please. And there's real justification for doing it here, not just the convictions. He violated 10 gag orders. He has yet to admit remorse, which judges care about. So that's what happens if he loses. Even so, he would have appeals and he wouldn't see the inside of Rikers Island cell for uh, a year or more. If he wins, you're right. He can't make it go away. But I think the federal courts and the U.S. Supreme Court might say, you know what, you can't do it. You can't incarcerate a sitting president, which actually to me makes sense. So I think that what that would do is forestall the whole thing while he remains president at January 20th. 2028 or whatever mm -hmm. he'd be uh, they, they'd be preparing his cell for for him then. Interesting. So um, you wrote in this L.A. Times article that I referenced a vic victory for Kamala Harris would leave Trump with no new cards to play against the juggernaut of criminal cases against him. But Harry, if Trump loses the election, can he still tie up the January 6th case and the classified documents case in litigation that drags on and on? I would say that drags on, but his on and on days are pretty much done. You're right that especially the January 6th case, we've got a year ahead of us of slogging through the Supreme Court opinion on immunity and figuring out what goes there. We, it's always a question mark with Eileen Cannon, but her dismissal of his case is right now served up to the 11th Circuit. So, yes, nobody should expect that these cases resolve in February or March. But nevertheless, I think he will be right into the maw of the criminal justice system again. And, you know, there's just no option here. You could imagine a scenario where, you know, in some Nixon Ford way, there's a grand deal. Trump, you don't have to go to jail, but just go away and leave us alone. But that just can't happen here. For one, he would never accept it. And even if he said he would, nobody would believe him. So the, the, the criminal justice system is going to play its role. It's not a fast roll, but it's but it's really there in a matter of a year or two, during which there's going to be all kinds of litigation and things for us to look at month in, month out. But, but here's what you write, that a, a victory for Trump would amount to a free pass for a presidency and post-presidency that have been nothing short of a crime spree. Pretty strong words there. What specific yeah. steps would he have to take then as president to try to just get rid of all the cases against him? All right. So there's the New York case, which I told you, I think he can mm -hmm. push off four years. Who knows what it looks like then, what he's tried to do to Alvin Bragg. The other two, the big ticket items where he has to get, just because of the way other uh, defendants have been treated, pretty long sentences if he's convicted, as I believe he will be. What does he have to do? Call up the attorney general and say, dismiss this case. Go to the court and say it's over. And that is it. That one phone call hmm. uh, makes the case go away because it's not final. He's the president and can just tell the Department of Justice what to do with a pending case. And we have no doubt that's exactly what he would do. He's already said he'd fire Jack Smith in two seconds. Can, can I ask real quickly, because you mentioned Richard Nixon, which brings me to, yep. do you think President Biden would offer him a pardon just to coalesce the country in some way or at least not let it fall further apart and, and separate? Do you think he'd take it? I'd, I'd put the odds of that at 
zero. Uh, you know, we have an open wound here still, Alex, and I don't see Biden as his last acting office trying to suture it up. You could imagine, as I said again, some discussions involving a President Harris. But I think to your second question, no, he wouldn't. We've been so fastidious about trying to play this as you would with other defendants. I think there's no room now for the broader system to operate for that kind of grand bargain. We're looking at the cases as they played out for others, and they are not at all pretty for Trump if he loses on Tuesday. Okay. It was a heck of an article and a terrific conversation. As always, Harry Lippman, thank you so much.